everybody. I am excited to share with you one of my favorite books today called Bloom by Doreen Cronin and David Small. Once upon a time in a beautiful glass kingdom, there lived an unusual fairy named Bloom. Her boots were caked with mud, there was dirt between her teeth, beetles rested in her wings. Bloom's magic could spin sand into glass, turn weeds into blossoms, and grow a trickle of rainwater into a racing river. Bloom was a helpful creature, but her footsteps were heavy, and she left a trail of tiny cracks and mud wherever she went. As the years passed and the kingdom became larger and shinier, the people cared less about Bloom's magic and noticed only the mess that she left behind. They complained about her heavy feet and her muddy fingerprints. Bloom had finally had enough. She left without saying goodbye and went to live in the heart of the forest. Both the kingdom and Bloom were extraordinarily happy with the choice she had made. Years and years went by, and the glass kingdom had fallen into a state of disrepair. It was held together by duct tape, glue, and peasants. The king was reminded of the powerful creature who once lived in the kingdom. His royal court offered to find her, but the king declined their help. Surely a creature with such power will answer only to a king. Very well, your highness, but tread lightly. Fairies are delicate and easily frightened, advised the royal court. The king entered the forest on his swiftest steed, determined to find the creature and save his kingdom. Bloom felt the horse's hooves and came to greet the king. I am looking for a magical creature gone so many years ago, he announced. I am here, she answered. The king glanced at Bloom with her dirty hair and clunky shoes. Show me magic that will save my kingdom, ordered the king. Bloom placed a bucket of mud at the king's feet. How dare you, bellowed the king. He dismissed Bloom as a trickster and rode off. Suit yourself, said Bloom, perfectly happy to go back to her own business. When the king returned empty-handed many days later, the queen decided that she was much better suited to find the magical fairy. Maybe your deep voice frightened her off, said the queen reassuringly. I must go in your place. The next day, she entered the forest accompanied by a single guard. Bloom heard the footsteps and once again, curious, she stepped out to greet the queen. I am looking for a magical creature gone so many years ago, announced the queen. I am here, answered Bloom. Show me the magic that will save my kingdom, ordered the queen. Bloom placed a bucket of mud at the queen's feet. How dare you, bellowed the queen. She dismissed Bloom as a trickster and rode off. Have it your way, said Bloom. She picked up her bucket and skipped back to where she came from. What of the magical creature, asked the king upon the queen's return. Broken glass crumbled under her feet as she crossed the room. Rain fell from the cracks in the ceiling. Clearly it is too frightened to speak directly with royalty, answered the queen. We must send someone ordinary. Genevieve was exactly that, the smallest and quietest in the kingdom. Her only job in the palace was to collect, wash, and dry the queen's exquisite crystal sugar spoon. It was the single object in the kingdom that had not yet cracked. The queen summoned Genevieve to her chambers and exclaimed, explained the dire situation. You are our last hope, she said kindly. I will not fail you, my queen, Genevieve said in her tiny voice. She brushed the broken glass out of her hair, packed a small bag, and left for the forest. Genevieve traveled through the dark woods without carriage or guard. 
Bloom heard the sound of her feet pressing into the ground and stepped out to greet the girl. I am looking for a magical creature gone so many years ago, said Genevieve. I am here, said Bloom. Have you any magic to save the kingdom? Bloom placed a bucket of mud at the girl's feet. Perhaps if I explain, said Genevieve. You see, our kingdom is built of glass and it is falling to pieces. Bloom placed a shovel at Genevieve's feet. I am happy to help you with your chores, of course, but perhaps you can show me the magic first, Genevieve said. Bloom studied the tiny girl for a moment. She was so delicate. She had barely left a footprint behind her. What is your work in the kingdom? asked Bloom. I collect, wash, and dry the queen's crystal sugar spoon, Genevieve told her. Is that all you can do? asked Bloom, hoping she didn't sound too harsh. Actually, I'm not, I'm not really sure, said Genevieve. It's all I'm allowed to do, lest my hands get too rough or too dirty to properly care for the spoon. Why would the king and queen send a delicate child with such a delicate job deep into the forest to do something that they could not? asked Bloom. Because I am ordinary, answered Genevieve. A dark shadow passed over Bloom's face. She picked up her bucket. She picked up her shovel. She took the girl by the hand. I will show you the magic that can save your kingdom, said Bloom. Bloom led the girl into a clearing with a small house, a working fire, and an enormous mud pit. She plunged her hands into the pit, hurled the brown glob onto the ground, and quickly made a mud pie. You try it, said Bloom. Oh, I mustn't, cried Genevieve. I'll never be able to touch the queen's sugar spoon again. Do you wish to save the kingdom? asked Bloom quietly. Genevieve did not want to fail the queen. She closed her eyes, stuck her hands into the bucket, and pulled out a scoop of wet, gloppy earth. Nervously, she shook her hands, and the mud fell to the ground, splattering everywhere. Not bad, said Bloom with a smile. Genevieve laughed and brushed the splatter, splatters off her feet. Now try again, Bloom encouraged. This time, Genevieve enjoyed the cool, shifting feel of the mud, so different from the delicate spoon. She flung it to the ground exactly as Bloom had. Nicely done, Bloom said. Smiling, Genevieve shaped the mud into a small round pie. Perfect, announced Bloom. Now, let's make some magic. Genevieve watched Bloom as she shaped one of the mud pies into a perfect brick. She pulled back her hair with her muddy fingers, rolled up her sleeves, and tried to do the same. She made a lopsided, lumpy oval brick. You'll get it, said Bloom. After 16 more tries, Genevieve had made the perfect brick. What else can I do? asked the girl. You'll see, said Bloom. Shovel after shovel, bucket after bucket, she showed Genevieve how to add straw into the mud. That made the bricks even stronger. When her pile of bricks towered over her head, Genevieve was not tired at all, but eager to do more. Bloom showed her how to make mortar by mixing mud with sand. What's that for? Genevieve asked. You'll see, Bloom said. And brick by brick, row by row, wall by wall, the fairy and the girl built a sturdy house in the middle of the forest. I can't believe what we've done, shouted Genevieve. Look at that awesome house. You must go back to the kingdom and share your magic, said Bloom. But how can I bring back a house? asked the girl. You can't. You can only tell the king and the queen what you can do, said Bloom. Oh, they will never believe that an, an ordinary girl could do such an extraordinary thing, Genevieve worried. 
What would I tell them? Tell them there is no such thing as an ordinary girl, said Bloom. Genevieve returned to the kingdom. Her feet were caked in mud. There was dirt between her teeth. Beetles were resting in her hair. She knocked on the palace door and shattered it to pieces. I am here, she shouted. Then an ordinary girl rebuilt a kingdom. And look at that awesome palace. The end. And I love this book because like Bloom, I think there's no such thing as an ordinary girl or an ordinary boy. You are all extraordinary. Thanks for joining me.